Welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk today about Sweden and the truth about Sweden. Let's get into it. All right, Sweden, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. So, um, you know, I mean, when the COVID-19 crisis hit, um, obviously it hit um, China in late 2019, around November, December. Uh, and that's when it began to spread there. And then in January, around the time when the impeachment of Donald Trump ended and was not successful, um, it began to spread within Western civilization. Um, obviously, I do believe part of it is, is aimed at Donald Trump, but that's another issue. We can talk about that another day. But there were different kinds of reactions um, to this crisis from around the world. Uh, and there were different kinds of reactions that were rather successful. Um, there were uh, one of the most successful, at least from my perspective, reactions was what they did in Sweden. Um, there was a decision uh, to do some kind of social distancing. If you wish to wear a mask, you could wear a mask, but most people didn't. Um, and uh, to keep society open, not to lock down. Um, and essentially the country went for what is a thing called herd immunity. And um, in a country of, uh, I think around 20 million people, they had around 5,000 deaths. Uh, a lot of them were from um, old people, in old people's homes. Uh, and um, there are some false positives in the amount of deaths that we see. So maybe that death figure is maybe inflated. Let's say if it's 5,000, maybe 2,000 people of that would have died anyway. Um, you know, I mean, because if basically in hospitals at the moment, if you have COVID and you die of, you know, the fact that you're 95 and you're going to die within six months anyway and you happen to get COVID, well, that's listed as a COVID death. And it, it seems, I mean, there are many cases of people who are, who've died from other causes and uh, put down a COVID whether they had it or not. So, I mean, that's another issue again. But like in Sweden, um, at the most, it seems it's around 5,000. And then in the last week or two, the deaths from COVID have almost gone down to nothing. I think there's been about a week or something with no COVID deaths. Um, so uh, they've gone for something like herd immunity and they seem to have achieved it. And not only that, they've kept their economies open and they haven't wrecked their economies. It's quite extraordinary really because Sweden is a country known for its kind of, um, I guess, you know, um, radical multiculturalism and things like this. And um, it's very unusual that they went this kind of, you know, I, I've made the joke online, based Sweden. Um, because it's the last country that you would expect that term to be applied to based kind of means, you know, embracing a kind of tough new right kind of perspective. You would normally apply it to a country like Poland based Poland or based Hungary, but based Sweden in relation to COVID-19. Yes, it seems to be the case. Um, you know, they've kept the country open and, um, have uh, been quite strong during it. Obviously, it's a country that is cold a lot of the year, so things like pneumonia are a real problem up there. So, um, you know, it's not like a country that's like, you know, blessed with um, warmer weather around the Mediterranean. So, you know, it is quite brave what they did. And um, I think, you know, um, in relation to the economic crisis that's being caused in Western countries um, from these lockdowns and from these, you know, radical kind of um, extreme kind of reactions to COVID-19, I think the case of Sweden needs to be examined. And, you know, obviously, you know, what I call the sleep state, which is the bureaucrats that surround our politicians, even Scott Morrison in Canberra, um, you know, they're being kept from this kind of information quite clearly. I mean, because I think if ScoMo... Uh, well, Tony Abbott or, you know, one of our better prime ministers looked at his information, they would think, well, this is the way our country needs to go. Um, we need to reopen, I guess, slowly and uh, hope to limit uh, the infections. And, um, you know, because it seems like this isn't going away. I mean, what are we going to wait around two or three years for a Bill Gates vaccine, which could be even dodgier than the disease itself? I don't think so. Um, so, you know, I think we need to look at the case of, of, of Sweden and look at the writings of a guy by the name of Jeffrey Tucker, who I highly recommend. Um, he's a very good writer. He's a kind of libertarian thinker from Washington, D.C. And uh, he writes for the Mises Institute and many other um, kind of libertarian kind of um, things. So check out all the writings of uh, Jeffrey Tucker. There's his page on Facebook. Go like that. Uh, he's a great writer. And he's been a real, um, I guess, a balm or a salve during this crisis because he's constantly fought uh, against uh, locking down the economy. He's somebody who really values the kind of, um, uh, I guess, the positive aspects of capitalism. And he's someone who's writing on capitalism, I find um, quite inspiring because I can be critical of capitalism myself, but he's somebody who really examines uh, how capitalism, um, you know, is a kind of engine of freedom uh, and an engine of individual kind of uh, enrichment and things like this. And he's, uh, as a kind of um, 
somebody who speaks the ideas of, of libertarianism. He's an incredibly articulate speaker. And I highly recommend his thought. So, uh, and he's written uh, a lot on the subject of Sweden. He's also written about Melbourne and his absolute shock um, at the kind of reaction that Melbourne has had to um, uh, the COVID-19 crisis. So, you know, that's what I wanted to say. Uh, and I think we need to rethink things because I don't know how much longer we can keep our economies um, closed down without, you know, like, you know, almost permanently destroying uh, uh, our local economies. I mean, Victoria is in a dire state. It's a fucking nightmare, ladies and gentlemen. So that's it from the report from Tiger Mountain. Thank you for listening.